Pundit is the football trivia game, ideal for the football head in your life. Every sale of Pundit using the code LIONS at checkout earns you a 10% discount plus a donation for the Lions Food Hub. Visit punditgames.co.uk to order your copy or visit at Pundit Games on Twitter. Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to the post Lord Mayor's show edition of Achtung Millwall. Joining me for this post Coventry, um, what, what should we call it? Wake, I suppose, is uh, our listed lion actually for, for today. It's a new guest, new voice to the show. Very welcome, one Mr. Mike Bissica. Welcome to the show, Mike. Thanks for having me, Nick. Um, we were just speaking off air, mate, weren't we? Uh, obviously, in the aftermath of a very drab, by all accounts, uh, disappointing uh, 1-0 loss at Coventry City last night. That's the most Millwall sequence of events to go from the high of the first win at Loftus Road in pretty good circumstances on Saturday for 40, 30 odd years to um, a drab midweek uh, defeat at, uh, at Coventry. I, I can't think of any more Millwall situation than no, that, Mike, absolutely. can you? Uh, no, we never really got in the game, I don't think, not until they scored, and it was a very drab, uh, sluggish performance. They were much more they were up for it, and we weren't. Um, I, yeah. I think probably Saturday took a lot out of them, to be honest, and they probably could have done with not playing midweek, but still, that's the way it goes, and... Uh, it was very yeah. anticlimactic. I, I actually wrote some notes and I said we were lucky. We were really lucky. At right. Time. Okay. Be at least one down. If yeah. Two. So, and you know, we played all right when they scored. We came forward a bit. We created a couple of chances. Possibly should have had free kicks and things. But uh, overall, I don't think we can really complain. No, I mean, I've, I've not seen the game, listeners. I, I was actually out last night, so... Um... This was pre-arranged by Longworth. This was a pre. This was a, a rearranged fixture last night. I'm sure it was due to be. Was it with, with the weather cancelled it or something yeah, like that? that um, so anyway, it, it clashed with um, some tickets that we had for last night. So I didn't get to see it. I, I did tape it, listeners. On, on tape it, if that's the right expression nowadays, on Sky. Um, but I can't be bothered to watch it, even though I'm speaking to Mike this morning to do a show. I just couldn't raise the enthusiasm to sit and watch a drab. 1 0 loss for Millwall. Yeah. Apparently, a good goal, Mike. Uh, is it Gyarkarez for, yeah, for, for Coventry? He took it well. Yeah, is that right? yeah. I read some something. He turned Creswell, but to be fair, he'd been he'd been doing that quite regularly, and he just hit the ball um, from about I don't know twenty five yards. It went in the bottom corner. Right. Long, yeah, he could say long, but it was a really it couldn't have he couldn't have put it better. You know the place he put it. It's a top goal. We got to accept. Yeah, yeah it was a good goal. And that's what you get. We've got class in the division, which we don't have. You know, not up play. front. We don't, Mike, do we? I mean, I think that's that's you know, it's the it's the, it's the great debate. Well, there's there's two things really. I mean, I, I think we've got question marks in goal at the moment. I yeah, I, agree I don't mind John George Long. No. I don't mind him, but um, if you're asking me to get a shot stopper, which doesn't seem to be rated as highly in the modern game, Mike, does no, it? it? Doesn't. No, I agree with you entirely. I'm I'm old fashioned. I like my goalkeepers to be goalkeepers. I don't care yeah. if I kick the ball fifty yards. Other players can do that. So I prefer Bart. I really would have him. And to be fair to Long, he made three or four good saves in the first half. Really made very good right. saves. Um, but he's still an average goalkeeper in my opinion. I agree. He's uh, Bart. Bart will be my man all the time. It's supposed to be all about the distribution, Mike. Um, George Long being a better distributor of the ball. Um, I suppose the results might do the telling of that story. I, I don't know, but I, I, I struggle to see it at times. I was I was there on at Loftus Road on Saturday, yeah. and you know you could you could probably have a conversation about George Long should have done better for the the goal that gave them absolutely hope. Yeah. 
hope late in the game. But yeah. you know, this this distribution thing. I mean, I, unless I'm unless there's like mysteries of football that aren't apparent to me, yeah. or maybe you, I don't know. No. You know the, Listeners won't see the screen, but there's a lot of Millwall experience on this screen at the moment, about 100 years or so, I reckon. Yes. But it's, it's not apparent to me what, 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 the, what the big deal is with the distribution of George well, Long. Well, I can't I... understand why you've, you've got a guy like Long who kicked the ball a long, long way, and yeah. he kicks it to Tom Bradshaw, who is <laughs> five, five, He's if not. He, if he had a he's good, no Cascarino, is he? Absolutely. If he had a good, big, tall centre-forward there, that's fine, but... Not, you know, what, and poor old, I like Tom Bradshaw. He works his socks off. But, yeah, you know, he's he's not getting he's not getting there because he can't get there because he's playing against bigger players who say thank no. you very much. I'm not it away for you. I mean, it's very, it's very Millwall, isn't it? One minute we're we're, we're leaving um, QPR on Saturday, buzzed in uh, in fifth place in the, yeah. in the top six, <laughs> talking about um, our assault on the Premier League next season, and then two days later. Um, there are people slating um, players online. Um, I, I, I haven't seen yeah. any of this, but even uh, uh, Zian Fleming getting some criticism, oh, which amaz uh, amazes me. Um, me Vogel, too. Vogel Sammer being yes. described in unflattering terms. Yes, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, we, we do lurch from extreme to extreme absolutely, at the end. Absolutely, Mike. yeah. And I think, you know, for me, we've got two things we don't have. We don't have a deep enough squad. That's why Burnley and Sheffield United are the top. Because no. when a player gets injured, they bring in a, a quality player. We haven't got that. Um, we just don't have that touch of class up front. So we're doing incredibly well, I think, for a small side with limited budget. I think we do. To be where we are is quite amazing. I, I agree. I, I think the, the, the budget, it governs everything. Strangely enough, listeners, I went to, I was out last night, I went to see a play called The Lehman Trilogy, which is about... The uh, the story of the Lehman Brothers, uh, the investment bank, oh. whatever you want to call it, and then its uh, ultimate crash in two thousand eight. And I thought that was, I've really made the joke online, Mike, about a story of hard work, misplaced dreams, and ultimate hubris <laughs> leading to disaster. And I saw we, I was in the theatre checking the Twitter score, listeners, and I saw we got him beat one 0 Oh, there we are. Um, so I'm going to play the voicemail now for you, listeners, just to sum up last night. There's not much more we can say about that loss at Coventry, then we'll be back after that message with Mike, who's our listed lion for this edition. So we'll be back in a moment. Hello? John Rankin here, just ringing in with his match report after the uh, away defeat at Coventry. Well, it's the morning after the night before, I'm afraid, and it didn't quite go our way, as everyone's aware. Uh, we travelled up, a uh, good journey up, and uh, there are, I think there are about six, 700 of us there. Coventry brought a good crowd with them, and they did make plenty of noise. And I've got to say, we were under the cost from word go. Uh, never really got into the game. They attacked, Millwall attacked our end, first half, and there were very few chances for us to get behind. And they just ground us down, really. Um, they moved the ball very quickly. Um, they had good, sort of fluid passing, and we failed to cope. Um, our midfield kind of got outplayed a little bit. Very quiet game from the players that we expect normally to kind of, you know, do something positive and aggressive and on the front foot. And I don't know, first half, we were sort of thinking, well, you know, we soaked up a lot of pressure. They failed to score. Uh, there'll be a wave when we're, we've got some pressure because that's the way football goes. And we might score a goal and come away. But second half, they came out strong. And I've got to say, this uh, Gorkarez, who we understand from one of the stewards at Coventry, Everton offered £25 million for. I don't know if that's true or not, but it certainly was a bit of a one-man show for them. All their players are pretty competent, um, but the way they played was just basically to move the ball as quickly as possible to to their uh, main attacker. And his, you know, his quality showed. His goal, uh, you know, it looked inevitable. I, I said to some of my friends in the crowd, I said, we can't keep on soaking up this pressure, you know, without them getting something from it. And eventually they did. So... Yeah, it was a pretty poor night. Uh, I'm not going to criticise anyone. Um, I think it was just one of those days when we weren't really up for it. Kind of suffering from the, 
you know, the the afterglow, if you like, of, of the QPR away victory, you could sense a come down. I personally thought that we'd be a bit weak in the first half because of the come down from QPR and then we'd kind of, you know, get our strength back and have a good second half. But the first go early on in the second half really sealed it. We were never going to score. That That's the problem. You, you get a sense. And we had some good pressure in the second half. We managed to get the ball into their box quite a bit. But, you know, we just knew that there wasn't a goal in us for some reason. So it was a pretty disappointing performance a tough one to take especially coming off the back of that QPR game but there you go that's Millwall I mean we just quite haven't got the one or two you know or even one sort of character there that can drag a team up um, you know away from a kind of lacklustre performance Coventry certainly have and, and, and I don't know why Coventry aren't much higher in the division when they came to the den earlier in the year they put two goals on us very quickly and we, we clawed our way back and won 3-2 and um, I think we got what we deserved actually on the evening so never mind you dust yourself off and you start over again and we go on to Sheffield United where knowing Millwall as I do we'll probably come Come out strong and, 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 and fighting, you know. So, over over and out, come a new Lions. Hello, Nick. Bill Slack. Um, what an anticlimax that was, mate, wasn't it? After the weekend. Um, very, very difficult to, to watch. I think we touched the ball once in their box in the first half. Basically conceded our final third of the pitch to Coventry. Poor old Bradshaw. Braddy, Bradders, whatever we're calling him this week. You know, that lad was brought into this club to be a to be a finisher. You know, penalty area, six-yard box, you know, be there when the ball drops, be there. You, you know what I'm saying. Um, and what's that poor little bastard become? He's become a, a marathon runner for, for very little, if, if no return. Um, there cannot be a centre-forward in this country who works as hard as him for, for less of a point. It really, really disappointing. Um, I'll come back to what I said after the Sunderland game. I, I had that bloke doesn't make substitutions earlier. It, it, it's beginning to become a real problem. Um, and I'm, I'm not a genius, mate, by any stretch of the imagination, as I'm sure you can all tell. But, you know, I was on Twitter last night and every other tweet from Millwall supporters is, why doesn't that geezer... Why doesn't he, he make those substitutions? He seems to be happy with the status quo in the game. If it's nil-nil, he seems to be of the mindset that they're doing all right. But again, no master tactician here. But I turned around to the old man again last night and said, it's coming. They're, they're going to score. And I wasn't quite expecting the, the finish that they scored with. But you could just tell. You, you could tell all the energy had gone out of us. And, and what does he do? <sighs> again... Um, Sunderland, they score, we substitute. Like that's going to sort out the issue. You know, you talk about lock the stable door after the horse has bolted. And then again last night, 63 substitutions after they score. You know, when everyone could see that we needed some more energy on there. We have players on that bench that can make a difference in the game. Burke, Eze, I, I am now a paid up member of the Eze fan club after refusing to be. He looks like he's... He's the real deal. Our manager isn't giving that squad of players the best opportunity to get a result. That that that's how I feel. And I know I know some people will say, do you know what our budget is? Do you know um, where we should be if you looked at our budget and, and all of this stuff? And I do get it. I get it. We were fifth going into that game last night, looking up rather than down. The old club buzzing, you know, that the entire Millwall support four square behind the team. And then and then we turn in a performance like that first half. Really, first 70 minutes was absolutely appalling. I think the most difficult or the most frustrating thing is we've got Sheffield United and Burnley coming up. And if we come out of that with, with, with two points, I'll be over the moon. Coventry away, we should have come away with something. We should have had another point or three points. If we're going to get anywhere near those playoffs, that's... That's just where, those are the games last night that, that get you into the top six, that get you into the playoffs. And he just approached it like, 
Yeah, nil nil will do me. Nil nil will do me. Oh fuck, we've gone one nil down. I'll throw on five fucking substitutes. When everyone could see that we needed a Burke on. We yeah. So yeah, I told you you should hide your belt and your laces, mate, before you listen to this, but um I don't want to turn into one of them fellas that fucking rings up and moans every every week. Saturday was absolutely brilliant, all ends up. But he, he, he costs us sometimes, doesn't he? Anyway, um, come on, you lions, and row it. Make some fucking substitutions before you actually desperately have to. Cheers. Achtung, Mailball. Welcome back to the show, Mike. You are our listed lion, mate. It's been been a little while trying to get this together, but we've done yeah. it at last. Um, big big welcome to you, mate. Thank you. Um, now. I see that you are an experienced. You, 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 it's a rare guest that comes on my show that's got more Millwall experience than oh, me. Yeah. But this time I've been topped, mate. Um, yeah, quite you're, you're, quite tell us your Millwall story, Mike. When, when was your first game, mate? When my did first you... game was in 1954. 54? Yeah, I, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm 77 this year, so I've got a bit of experience. Wow. Um, um, yeah, so... It's. I actually look. I have to look these things up because I can't remember that far back. It was, um, in sep- It was in. It was against Southampton. We won two nil. I'm just going to um, look that one up while you're, while while you're, you're talking. So a two nil win in 1954. 20th of September 1954. It was. There it is. 29th of September 19. Uh, no, um, 20th of September. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, a two nil win at uh, home. Um, 11,237. In the crowd, including, of course, our guest this week, Mike Biss, and my dad, dad from, yeah. and your dad. <laughs> yeah. um, when did you? When? How long was you? Was your dad a, a Millwall fan then, Mike? 54? Yeah, he was. But it, it, pro- I used to go with my mate, and the problem was both our parents worked seven days a week, basically. So he didn't right. really go very often. So he told me about things. So anyway, this this was the first time I went in '54, and I, I, tell, I was going to say that the old den was very different then. Because yeah. the grand, we we stood along. You know where the grandstand was. It it only it, facing the you know the the main stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It only went about three quarters of the way along. Right. And there was a there was a gap at the end where you could stand. Right. So oh, I, I had, didn't know that. No, well that's <laughs> I only know that because I stood there and right. um, and you had to pay a couple of pennies more. And I think my mum, who was a bit scared of me going, said, my dad, you've got to go and stand there because it won't be so rough. <laughs> <laughs> so so we, we we actually went up there and, and, and did that. And of course, wow. the other, I, gen, then I went there a few times, but then I moved on to the main concourse sort of thing yeah. and was able to, at that age, just sit on the wall around the ground. Wow. You're, you you're, living, to, you're living history, Mike. Well, I am. <laughs> <laughs> but you, sitting on the wall was fine. And the only place you didn't want to go was round by the corner flag, right. Yield it and Road End, because yeah. it was about six foot high there, because the, <laughs> the paving had dropped. So you, if you went there, you'd fall off, and you, you know, that wasn't very pleasant. So they let you sit on the wall, but you had to keep your legs inside, not not in the ground. They wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the right side of the of the boundary. But how old a, how old were you when you went then, Mike? How age would you have been at about this? Eight. Place? I started. Eight. Yeah. Blimey. Eight. Blimey. Uh, and then I used to go with my mate Peter, who's still around. He's, he lives in Australia. We used to go, and in those days the reserves used to play on a Saturday. Right. So we go for all the time. We go down and walk, walk down the Mill Wall because my my school is Hilton Road School, which is right, right okay. to the ground now. Right so opposite. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, it, so you'd it, alternate. You wouldn't away travel. I guess then wasn't no, such not, a. No, no. Well, the, the the problem with the away travel. Um, the only they sometimes used to run coaches, but it would be the local coach firm would advertise Aldershot or Gillingham right. or something. Yeah. So you could you, you could do that. Yeah. Um And you'd we'd, but it, you know because we didn't have cars and things, and I no. wasn't you know ten twelve. Yeah. You know, I didn't I didn't tend to explore the. the wasn't going to happen. No. No, so it you, wasn't. No. So you'd go basically go go to Millwall week in week out. You reserves yeah, one week, the, first team the next. The only the only the only difference with that was if our, one of our parents or one of our dads mm. um, as a special treat, we'd go down to Peckham bus garage, and they'd they had a, <laughs> a shilling 
right for an adult. Shilling listeners. We'll have to explain that in a minute, won't we? They'll agree at 5p <laughs> and sixpence for, for kids. Yeah. And they'd, they'd alternate between Arsenal and Spurs. Right, OK. So they'd take you to the ground in the in the bus. You'd get yeah. a ticket to student and then you'd come off the bus and they'd bring you back a back and bus garage. Blimey. Yeah. Different times. I mean, we, we've said this on this show over over the years now, Mike, one way and the other. It was very different, my memory, in the 70s. I mean, I don't go back to the 50s, but a similar kind of ideas then. You could just go to the football. You could go to Arsenal, I suppose. We'll yeah. get, you know, pay to get yeah. in, obviously. But it wasn't it wasn't this big deal of ticket arrangement. And, and obviously, the cost no. then was, was much reduced. Um, I think we've lost something from the game, don't you? I mean, I, I, I get that money... Makes the world go round for the cliche, but um, we've, we've lost something valuable from that. I think that era, in that way, anyway. Well, I was going to. The other thing I was going to say was when I first arrived in '54, televisions only really started the year before right. with the coronation. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. people got, and they were, you know, my nan who who had my aunts and uncles living at home, they could afford a TV between them. Right. And it was that expensive, you know. It's a bit like buying a Rolls Royce. It really was. <laughs> And there were very, you actually asked around how many people have seen coronation, that coronation on TV. Very few, because there were very few. So that meant there was no football. No. The only thing on TV was the cup final. Yes. Which yeah. was the big thing. And the boat race. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that a, was big a big event. thing in those days. The boat race was probably bigger than football because they people used to wear their colours and quite incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And the sports results, you, you know, there wasn't this 24 hour. Sports results coming at you. No. There was a programme on, I think there was a programme at about five o'clock on a Saturday on the radio. You could get this. But other than that, you had to wait for the papers. Yeah, just uh, different vibe, isn't it? You're right about the boat race. Now you say that, my, 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 my grandfather used to, I don't know how he could claim that he, he, he followed Oxford in the boat race, but he yeah. always... Uh, you know, unless there was a dog track there, he had, there might have been a Greyhound Stadium linked him to Oxford. They had no connection, certainly with the Oxford no, no, University no, whatsoever. No, you there know. used to be family arguments about yeah, that. Yeah, genuinely. You know. <laughs> what is it, two months a university? Nobody gives them monkeys, really. But no, it was a very big thing in those days. Very, very strange. Yeah. 1954. I was just looking at the game here. They had goals from Ken Pryor. Um, and from Jardine, which is Alex Alex Jardine, 49 Full back. goals. Yeah. Full back, six goals from 49. Millwall would finish in fifth position in the uh, the third division south back then, Mike, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Bristol City being the champions were the only team that got promoted. It was a bit of a bit of an arrangement. The only, only the champions side got promoted back then. It was, you can oh, see how we were stuck at that level for so long, can't you, when you look at that, that arrangement? Because yeah. you know. the other thing with us, we used to kick off at 3.15 then. Right because of the docks. Yeah. Yeah, because of the dockers coming and wanting, yeah. you know, having another pint before they got there or whatever. So, so if you had the evening paper, you would often get, you wouldn't get the Millwall result. What was the... Was what was your, I mean, you're eight, eight years old, um, what were your impressions over the next few years of going to Millwall of the crowd? I mean, um, I can't imagine it was much different back then uh, as a crowd. I mean, would, 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 did it, would, would you say that? Would it, was it the same kind of people back then? In, same in, vibe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very much the same sort of, without cliche, in a working class area. Yeah, yeah. With, with just ordinary decent people wanting to see a game of football. Yeah, and uh, I was going to say on one of my it actually moulded uh, my because when I went, if I went to Arsenal Spurs they just sort of watched the game. Yeah, but I remember we had a bloke in those days called Dennis Pacey. Now he right. wasn't a bad player; he played 130 odd games, scored about 30 goals. Right, and it was the first time I'd ever heard a crowd really have a go at their own player. He was <laughs> the laziest bloke on earth. <laughs> <laughs> and I then realised part of being a Millwall supporter was you had to go at your own players as well. <laughs> if they and that moulded my sort of fan career, if you like. It's, it's interesting. It was one of my first impressions. I mean, the seventies. I've said this a few times, but it really, really struck me how people would scream abuse. I remember yeah. Derek Smithhurst getting a slaughter oh, by. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I didn't know him that well. I mean, I was only young, so I, I, I couldn't assess him as a player, really. But people would, like you say, never Pacey. People would like vent their uh, unhappiness with life on these players, wouldn't they? Absolutely. 
Yeah, well, he seemed to be a way of doing that, didn't he? That a miserable week, I'm going to take it out on somebody who doesn't really care who it is. Like the 90 minutes hate, almost. There's some kind of yeah, 1984 did, yeah. scene out there, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, where So... You started out then. I, I didn't even know this standing area existed, Mike. Uh, you, yeah, you, you, yeah. You, you've done me over there. I, I, I'm going to have to look that up in my my um, reference reference books because that that old grandstand, I think, was the what was remained after the Second World War. Because I think it burned down part of the. Well, that that might have been the bit they hadn't rebuilt by that. Yeah, I imagine it would have been because they couldn't rebuild. Because re- you could stand in the front of it as well in those days, didn't you? You, that that predated me. I, I when I right. there was seats when I went there it was called the four oh, right. court so seats. Could, originally, it was standing. Right. Okay. And that, I went down there because that was a bit too low. So just to get a higher view. Of it was that. low down. I, uh, same kind of idea. My mum used to give me because you could pay to get into those four court seats, and I used to sit yes. there because yeah. it was less rough there. Mum used that's to say. Right. So, <laughs> I don't know how she knew, but anyway, uh, that's that's a different yeah. story. Um, where'd you sit at the new den, Mike? I mean, do you, do you like the new oh, ground? How do you? How are you? Yeah, I'm in block three. Okay. Um, um, in the front row, we managed when we had season tickets in the old ground to get because when I, I was going with my mate, we had two young kids then. Yeah. So we wanted to get somewhere where so we're in the front row, about ten yards off the centre circle. Okay. I so I, I, I find it very um, odd watching a game of football behind the goal. I mean, we. No, were I agree. I I'd listen to your commentary. <laughs> I don't like watching. No, it's you get you get a great view of. I don't. It always seems a bit lopsided. I mean, we're behind the goal at QPR, of course, but yeah, um, you can hardly see what's going on down the other end of the no. pitch. I've, I've never understood no. why people seek it out. Why it's such no, a big. No, I don't either. No, I much prefer to sit on the side. On the side, equal view of both goals. You know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, um, I watch, you know, I want to watch the game as much as anything. And you know, you go to some away grounds like when we go to Reading, and if you're up on the in the gods, what's yeah. that? The, the, it's almost a mystery, isn't it? Yeah, that's so you need a telescope up there, don't you? You do. Where, where was your Where was your regular spot once the the old den formed into its familiar shape and and, and layout? Where would you go? Were well, you a halfway line? Used, no, not quite. But towards because I was always an Ildeton Road man, and I came in because that was where I lived there. Yeah, yeah. New Road. Um, and I would come in again. Originally, of course, I sat on the wall. Yeah. But when I got too big to sit on the wall, which was not far off, you know, yeah. the big bloke anyway. I was in the grandstand to Walter Mill halfway, but very much towards the Ildeton Road end. Right. So just, where they, do you remember the old score, the scoreboard at half time? Yeah, ball? yeah, yeah, down at that end, yeah. Up yeah. towards there, but still undercover. Right. Okay, the okay. The, yeah, I, I, I was always, I, th- I think I started at Cold Blow Lane, but I was quickly migrated either into the seats or on the other side on the halfway right. line. That was that was always yeah. my spot. Um do you miss the old ground, Mike? Um no, if I'm honest, no. Mm. No. I mean I, I, like you, I've got heart issues and I can't stand up for any length of time. No, no. So in terms of having a seat, yeah. Um <laughs> seat's nice. <laughs> a seat's really nice. I miss no I don't because I I think when that when the new den's buzzing, mm. like it was for Sunderland, for yeah. example, yeah. it's as intimidating a place as you can ever wish to go. I think so. I... And I, I, I've got a couple of friends who I take, Sheffield United supporters, and I take them. Yeah. And they always say to me, when we sing the opening song, you know, you all come down to the den and we all do that, you know, arms <laughs> out. They say that's so intimidating. <laughs> And we don't think that's intimidating, do we? That's, I think we that's take it. it for granted, Mike. And, and, Absolutely. And I, I think another thing is it's a great theme around the Millwall Twitter and, and the message boards and all the rest of it. Everyone's always complaining that the atmosphere was terrible at the last game. It was awful. Like, the, yeah. den's, the den's dead. It's gone. Yeah. And then you, you bring other people in or, you know, other people come yeah. in and say, oh, well, it's fantastic. It's like... Um, you know, it's a different level. I think we just take it for granted. Or what we... well, I think we do, and I've always felt that I have a job to do when I go to the Millwall. I don't just go to watch. Yeah. I go to intimidate. I go to intimidate <laughs> the opposition. <laughs> I intimidate their fans, and particularly intimidate referees. I don't you know, think I've right? ever intimidated anyone, mate. But <laughs> no, no, you're not. I don't think I do, but I'd like to think I do. This is the fantasy we all we all create. I, I do think there's something. I mean, you, you know, 1954. You're talking about your first game and the that idea of screaming and shouting at the players. 
Um, I, I, I mean, you see it all around the modern den. Um, I do think there's something of um, you, you're released from regular everyday life there, Mike, yeah. and you could become yeah. something else. It's like this yes, um, no, absolutely. alternate ego. Yeah. No, I agree. And you can act in a way that you probably wouldn't act anywhere else. Well, not if you want to remain employed or, you know, <laughs> in any any kind of relationship whatsoever. No, you probably right. don't do that. But there, no, you're, right. you're, you're kind of mentally mentally released. Yeah. Um, there we are. We, we all know it. Um, just moving through our list of questions then, Mike. Your favourite all-time player. You've got a long... Um, a long period of so what, 50, how many years is that? 1954, that's uh, 60 plus years, nearly come to 70 yeah. years. 70 years, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a long while, isn't it? Who's your favourite? Um, I think there's only one, really. And it's got to be Terry Herlock. Wow. He's got, he has got to be my favourite, because he embodied everything <laughs> I ever saw in a, a Millwall player. player. He was it. And he was a much better player. Had he not had long hair and played for Millwall. Yeah. He would have been an England international because he was such a good player. He was the um, he was the equal of the likes of Brian Robson and and um, absolutely. you know the the standard midfield choices of the time, wouldn't he? Wasn't he? Well, I remember they they played Man City in a cup replay, and he played against Peter Reid. That's right. And they kicked lumps out of each yeah. other all night, and nobody complained because that was no. It. But he, you know, and he just got on with the job. Well, Reid was a hard was, man, and it was like this well, meeting was. of meeting of the titans in the center of the Absolutely. center circle and i remember they when they played when in the old first division they played wimbledon and vinnie jones yeah. was given it at large <laughs> two games we played he never came near terry Earl. no he went missing didn't he <laughs> He absolutely, he never, because I was, you know, everybody was waiting for him. He never tackled him, never got anywhere near him. Says everything about Terry Earl. It does. I, I remember that Manchester City. It was an FA Cup game. It was a midweek game. It was. It was. Um, and you're right. It was Peter Reid. was a hard man. And I, I, I've got a lot of time for Peter Reid. Um there was this moment in the game where there was like a, a, a tackle. Reid and Herlock went for the same ball. Yeah. And... They must have. It was almost like they met at the ball. Both were on the. You know, there was like this yeah. boom. It was like yeah. a like a sonic boom went around the den as the as they both hit the ball. How it didn't yeah. burst, I don't know. But <laughs> it, it felt blimey, like it sounded like Concord had just gone over or something. Um, yeah. It was it was a mighty, mighty event. Terry Herlock, I like that choice. I think, I think you're right. He almost um, epitomised the club, Terry, didn't he? I mean, he's it, such he a beloved figure he still did. at the den. You know. Yeah, I, I have to admit, I'll tell a story against myself. I was, I used to do, I was a trainer and I worked in a hotel. And I worked in a hotel in Southampton and there was this group of blokes and there was this scruffy bloke with long hair and I, because I was working, I didn't really go in the bar very much, mm. not until the last night. And I realised it was Terry Earlock who stayed right, there. Right, And I was, because I'm a few years old, I was too embarrassed to go and ask him for an interview. So I got my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Will you talk to me? <laughs> well, no, you know, you know, a big grown man so embarrassed to talk to his hero. It's really ridiculous, isn't it? It, it is. I, I, I know exactly where you're at. I've been lucky enough to do a couple of interviews over time with players. Players, who, I mean, I remember me uh, speaking to Trevor Lee, a player I really, right. really admired. And I you feel genuinely nervous, Mike, when you go. Yeah. To, um, yeah. Which is irrational. Not? Irrational, but there we are. Um, we've done your favourite all-time player, Mike. There's there's always another side to that coin. The worst player you've ever seen, the worst Millwall player you've ever seen. Who would, you've got a, well, a massive range of choices. I don't know. You're well, gonna, I've got quite a few. I was say, <laughs> <laughs> we well, we I've try and make the about. podcast about an hour long, so try and keep it within the hour <laughs> yeah. if you can. All right. I think I, I've got the absolute nugget going in. Okay. I mean, on the last one they were talking about Paul Goddard. He was a Terribly he, he worked out terribly for us, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Gerard Levine, do you remember him? <laughs> yes. Four hundred thousand pound fullback who couldn't tackle. <laughs> um, and then there was Braniff. Braniff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played. Uh, he was with us for years. He was. He was with us two thousand. I've looked this up because I have to because my memory's shot to pieces. <laughs> He played 36 times, and as far as I can see, they were all substitutes <laughs> and scored five goals. Um, so he was awful. And that, this bloke, Dennis Pacey, I said he was. Pacey, got, beyond, but, yeah. But the worst one I've ever seen was a guy called Andrew Igger. 
Oh, the goalkeeper. He was a goal- the goalkeeper. He played one game for us <laughs> against Stockport, and I was there, and we lost 5 1. He's the worst player I've ever seen play any football. <laughs> not only was he a poor goalkeeper, he had, and I, we, I was talking to my son because he was there. And when he threw, you know, when you go and kick the ball, he threw the ball. And he seemed to throw it about three feet higher than anybody else. <laughs> and as he, he seemed to have a problem actually kicking the thing. I do remember him, yeah. yeah. He was awful. And it was one appearance so, only. That was his first. One the... appearance, yeah. So, so for one appearance, he is my worst ever player. I always wondered with Andrew at Iga Iga, um, whether they grabbed hold of one of the stewards and said, can you play in goal? Well, like and you yeah, were stuck was, for a goalkeeper. He was awful. Yeah, um, it was a bizarre period. That was that was that was. Oh, when was it? Was like in the the two thousand kind of late nineties. Nineteen ninety seven. It was ninety seven. I had to look him up. Yeah, um, yeah. It wasn't a great time, was it? No, it's a good. Tim team. Carter was the Tim Carter was the goalkeeper normally. I think he was injured. And he was injured, injured or, something. or something. Yeah, I do remember. I remember that very very well. He was never seen again. No, thankfully, that's a great choice. I, I, I'd, I'd completely forgotten and he raised Andrew Eager Iger. Out of my mind. Um, your most memorable match, Mike. Who, what would you be your the, if you could pick one well, one game? Very difficult. Uh, again, quite a few there. Mm. Um, I mean, things like uh, the playoff final against Bradford. Yeah, yeah. That that was a great day. Yeah. Um, the because Fer- it went to Ferenc Varos away. Oh, did you do that? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, not, I did well, have the money. Up, yeah. And that was memorable for many, many reasons. <laughs> well, I've read <laughs> all the stories. <laughs> not associated with football, I have to say. I really was in fear of my life here. Um, um, the auto windshield, first time we got to Wembley. Wembley that was an event, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But for me, um, it has to be the cup final. The cup semi final was great, but the cup final. Yeah. Because I was able, my dad was still alive then. Right, okay. Um, and. My boy was old enough to go, so I was able to go to the cup final with my, my dad and the son. That's a fantastic thing to be able to say, Mike. Wow. Absolutely. And, 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 and as I said to you earlier, you know, the, the, the cup final was the only thing that was ever on telly. Yeah. So it was the biggest thing. So for, for us to get there was such a huge day. And that has to be purely for my own personal thing, my most memorable game. I, I, I like that choice. I, I, I know where you're going. I, I think the idea when I started going in the 70s, 1950s in your case, you know, the idea that Millwall would ever get to a cup final was <laughs> utterly, utterly remote, wasn't it? I mean, we made Absolutely. we made the quarterfinals when I was going in the 70s and that turned into mayhem yeah. Um, yeah. against Ipswich and then obviously in the 80s and, and so on. But we just never got anywhere close to things like that. We were never a, no. a club that made the big time, we just didn't. Um, so promotion no. in the late 80s and then the cup final. Um, yeah. It's quite hard to describe. I mean, obviously the game's changed, but it just seems such a remote, a remote idea. When you know, in the seventies, the idea that we'd ever get to these kinds of events. So, well, yeah. you know, yeah, um, yeah I agree. And, and, and but that day was uh, was so special. I think for for the club as much as anything else. I, I, I think it's a good choice. I think it's a good choice. Um, I, it's, I always find this a straight. I, I, I've never changed it, and I, I, I say this every time, but. Um, would you a favourite Millwall moment if it's different to the match? I suppose is what I'm trying to drive at there. Yes. Do you, yeah. do you have I'm a not... a Millwall moment versus I'm a couple? Yeah. Um, I remember because um, I used to go with a bloke called Dave, and he's bigger than me, and I'm a big bloke, mm. and he's bigger than me. And um, we went up to Liverpool uh, to watch them in the first division, yeah. and Paul Stevenson scored a goal. 1988. Yeah. 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 And I found my, we found ourselves jumping on the seats, covering each other. <laughs> and two fat blokes covering each other. <laughs> you know, I wish someone had a video of that because it was absolutely horrific. <laughs> that was, but, but I think it's got to be for me Neil Harris scoring at Wembley. At Watford. At Watford, right. the comeback goal. Yeah. The comeback goal. And he. Uh, the, the lifting up yeah, like this. Has lifted him up. That was an incredible, Mike. That's become an that iconic was... image, Mike, isn't it? That, yeah. That, 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 the, Absolutely. You know, the back of um, Tony Warner, Harris pointing. Absolutely. It's like one of those um, yeah. instantly recognisable images that, you know, you never forget. Um, yeah. No, great great choice. Because <laughs> we sponsored... My mate and I sponsored his shirt for a few years, Neil Harris's shirt right. as well. So that made it a little bit more... What a player he was. Obviously, prior to, prior to his illness... 
Um, I mean, I think we're probably on the brink of selling him in, in truth. I think we'd have hard pushed him yeah. to have resisted a, 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 a major bid from one of the big clubs. But um, obviously, the, his life took a different turning there. But, uh, you know, that, that season where he scored 30 goals in the, when we won the, uh, I still call it yeah. the third division. I can't, it was called Division Two, I think. Um, he was he was electric there, Mike. He was one of the. He was. He was. Yeah, you know, he was a real top level striker, Neil Harris, wasn't he? Was that the one where we were talking about the other day when um, when we beat Oldham? We beat Oldham, and I think that was the final game of the season. I think we were ch- yeah. we were champions. We'd won the champ- That's championship. Right. We won at, um, I think I'm going to pick you up on that. Oh, are you? Because. Yeah, because okay. you did a Coleman balls on. Did that. I? I, this, I, I did Coleman one Saturday. I've, I, 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 <laughs> when I, read, I, I don't listen to a lot of them back. Once you've done them, I, I think knock them out. But I, it, when you're speaking, it's it, 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 things flow, and you often come out of all sorts of no, no, it's, it's, it's all a, sorts of nonsense. You know, you know, Coleman balls is an art, a thing. In yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, yeah. What did I say? Well, what did I say? No, it, it wasn't. Yeah. Well, how it how it first started was in the 1968 Olympics. David Coleman was commentating on the 400 meters hurdles. Mm. And he said, it's David Hemery first, yep. Henniger second, yep. and who cares who's third? Well, John Sherwood of England <laughs> Britain was third. So that's how that He did care started. that he was third. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he <laughs> bloody cared. So did the rest He's got a bronze medal. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, what you said in that one was uh, uh, about the Oldham game. Yep. Uh, Harris got a hat trick. I think Moody scored the other yep. one. And you couldn't remember who scored the last one. It was it Cagle? And that was that shot. That was shot from Stephen Reed. Reed. That shot. That's he, right. He hit the ball about four million. That's miles That's one of his there. best goals ever. <laughs> 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 who cares who scored the fourth goal? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I thought. Well done, Nick. <laughs> I couldn't think. Oh dear, this is. <laughs> This is going to be a new feature, listeners. I'm going to get Mike on week in, week out to correct any any of my Coleman balls, <laughs> which there are many. I, I, I did one Saturday, and I thought, oh, my God, did I really? Oh, did you? I think I had Honeyman in midfield, and I said Honeyman's up front as well. And I thought, what was... <laughs> anyway, there we are. Good choice, good choice. I, 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 I like that. Um, amongst the current squad, obviously, we're talking after a very um, disappointing result last night. But who would, who would you like in the current squad, Mike? Who would you, who would you be your choice well, favourite if you had one? That's, I mean, I, I mean, you know, I like the, I like the current squad. Mm. There's some good players there, and you know, Billy Mitchell yeah. and people. I like him, but I've, in pure class, Fleming has got to different be. level. The different level. I mean, he is the second uh, after Sheringham. I mean, Sheringham is mm. way and above the, the most outstanding footballer we've ever had. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. I don't care where he played. If he played at West Ham, I wouldn't care a well, moment. He did. <laughs> he did yeah, no, you know, people don't like him for that. That's absolutely Only nice. those that weren't there. I, 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 I genuinely believe well, I, any any of us that lived through that period, you can't not recognise Teddy Sheringham for the, the, the figure that he is in Mill history. It's well, when impossible. the thing for me is, he was great in the, went in the first. He stayed that extra season, didn't he? He did. When we were oh, relegated, yeah. And he got 35, mm. 36 goals mm. that season. And he was magic. Yeah. He played every single game, because I looked that up, every single game. Yep. He wasn't a bloke who just went in the heat. No. You know, no. put three toys out of the So he, but you know, going back to now, I think Fleming is, is potentially an exceptional player. I agree. I, really I agree. Um, when, when he's not quite clicking on occasions. Either that's the system, the players around him. Mm. But, that goal, he, he, you know, he set up a QPR. He took took his time. He could have easily blasted it first time. Look round, people. Pass. I agree. I think he's a different level to all of the the rest of the squad. I mean, it's you know, it's, it's not fair to say that perhaps, but uh, I think often well, he's he's. he's He's one of these players because he's at that diff- next level that he's playing balls and and he's seeing opportunities that the the other uh, players of the squad aren't capable of seeing. So um, yeah. that may be the only thing that moves him on at some stage. Presuming we don't, um, you know, we, we we don't get ourselves into the top flight. But I love I love uh, Zian Fleming. He just brings that touch of quality. It's one of the reasons why you you, you follow football, really, Mike. You know, it's it's just yeah, be lifted. You know, absolutely. Um, and that goal he scored at Preston, wasn't it? When the ball was put across to him, that's right. And he sort of shimmied, yeah. And it looked, and it looked as though everybody else was in slow motion. And he turned, and, scored, and that's just class, real class. Absolutely. Man. Yeah, I like it. I, 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 I like that choice. Zian Flemmy, favourite current player. Um, number nine on our list. Before we get to your best ever, 
Millwall eleven is uh, your 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 most disliked uh, team or opponent uh, player or, or or club really. Um, well, do you have any? Every Millwall fans has has visceral dislikes and hatreds. But uh, who would your choice be? <laughs> Well, I'm going to turn that around a little bit. Okay. Um, because it's obvious for me where I was. West Ham didn't didn't really figure too much for me. Surprise. Right. Me. Where I was, where I went to school in Camberwell, uh, our secondary school, we had a lot of people from Dulwich, Sydenham, um, a lot of boys from Bermondsey, yeah. and Deptford. Yeah. So it was Crystal Palace. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. And I still see some of these people now are Palace supporters, <laughs> and there was a doctors <laughs> They've always been a different feeling. Of, um, I, I used to uh, alternate when I was young. I couldn't go away. But I used to go to Charlton one week and Millwall the next. Yeah, I've been, yes. Um, yeah. Uh, but, uh, in fairness, one of the two clubs with different personalities, Millwall and Charlton, they were very similar in terms of... Yeah. The, the, they're both working-class clubs in their way. Yeah. Charlton was yeah. different. It was it was based in a very industrial area. So if it was was not that different to Millwall in, in, the, in, the, in the kind of component of the crowd if you like how how it felt when you're yeah. in there very different yeah. but Crystal no, Palace felt much more middle class to me uh, Mike yeah. um, I don't like them no but I went to school with a lot of them I, don't, I never really you know, they're all Bickley, no, Bickley and Bromley really. you know ugh. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, yeah it's like that. I mean I think second very much second on my list of that is Wigan Wigan, Wigan. always seem to get in the way of yeah they uh Went to the auto windshield final with their three fans, and um, when I had our forty eight thousand, <laughs> and, uh, and I went up there for the playoffs, and they, oh, they just, I really hate Wigan. They just <laughs> get in my craw all the time. I know. But I really. Sorry. No, no, no. It's funny because uh, my wife often asks, you know, who are we playing this week, um, wherever it might be, Stoke or somebody. So she said, "Oh, is, you know, what, what, what's what, like, what's the relationships like with Stoke? I said, well, we all hate everyone, whoever, whichever team yeah, you're playing, right, whoever you're playing yeah. is basically there's always a grudge of some sort. Yeah, <laughs> there's yeah, history yeah. or grudge. There's something, you know. Yeah. Rare is the yeah, club that very... we don't really care, you know. No, absolutely. No. <laughs> but my, I was going to say my major hatred, and I know you don't like using that word, is referees. Referees. <laughs> I really." The Kevin Friends, the Keith Strouds of this world, and that person we had for the Sunderland game. Harry could give that goal offside. I, he cannot, from where he's standing, he cannot give that. And I just, I just think we get referees down there too regularly who want to prove a point that they can. They can take the, the crowd. Way. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, when you've got uh, Jake, I think, Jake being rugby league tackled, Mike, if you know, in front of the referee. Absolutely. No, I, I mean. That's just unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, if you're a sensible bloke, you look, it's a bloke who's six foot six, yeah. he's in the penalty area, going up, going for a corner, and he's not jumping, or he's on the floor. <laughs> now, is he doing that deliberately? Is he trying to get out the way of the ball? I, I, I don't you know. Think, it's, um... I, just, I just find the lack of consistency with refereeing is, is dreadful. I can understand them being bad, providing they're bad all the time. Yeah, consistency is the key, do, isn't it? Absolutely, and it's just awful. There was, and the guy last night was totally inconsistent, and I don't know. I find it it really winds me up every week. It's funny. There's there's a, a, a obviously a big campaign on the abuse of referees and and you know all sorts of things that go on on the grassroots level particularly, and I don't endorse that at all. But when you get to the professional level and you see some of the sloppiness and some of the um, yeah. Uh, inc- inconsistency is good. It's a good word. Yeah. You know, I I I'd never endorse um, abusing somebody particularly, but you can see why. You can see why in in the heat of a game you're going to get stick. You know, because they, yeah. they, it's almost no, self created in some ways. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Very much so. I, and I, I I say that's the big wind up for me, and that's why I tend to try and intimidate them as well. So. <laughs> Palace, Wigan, and referees. That's that's a wicked three way. Free, freeway yeah. cocktail you've you've dug out there, Mike. Um, <laughs> fantastic. So we come to our last question, which is your all-time Millwall eleven, um, dating back sixty odd years. So um, the floor is the floor is yours, Mike. Who, who, who are you it. choosing goal, mate? How would you start it off? Well, I did, overall, I decided to put the team as a Millwall team, and I, I know it's a Millwall yeah. team, but people played in a Millwall. What I would call the Mills. Okay. Yeah. You know? um, and that doesn't mean to say it's the best team. And it, 
I could, if you're talking about a best team, I could. Pick yeah, it'd be a different team. side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, we, I mean he, goalkeeper. We've been lucky over the years. We've had some good goalkeepers. Yeah. Um, Bart now, but there's been Brian King, yeah, of course, course yeah. who's legendary. Yeah. Casey Keller, yeah. Alex Stepney, Mike Stepney. He was a good goalkeeper yeah. for yeah. us. Um, good bloke as well. He came to my uh, old boys' school fate, and he saved penalties, and he saved it for about two and a half Did hours. He? You know, we just turn up for five <laughs> minutes, and you know, I thought that, that was, was a fair play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. They're very good. But my all-time favourite has got to be Reg Davis. Reg, oh, the cat, Reg Davis. Yeah, he goes back to the fifties, yep. and he was the guy who um, he wasn't a particular big man. Yep. I mean, they were in my memory in that vintage. They were all about five foot nine. Yeah. All the yeah. players. They all had slick back hair, <laughs> and they all looked as hard as nails. You wouldn't stare. You know? And he was one of those. Right. But his great trick was what um, George Long did against Sunderland. If he couldn't get the ball as he came out, he would try to punch it, but he invariably punched the centre. Go for his head. <laughs> and in every, in every single game I saw him play, he did that at least twice a match. He couldn't get the ball, so he'd smack the centre. And of course, what that when the next time it came across, the centre forward actually wasn't looking for him. He was looking for Reg Davis to go out and play him. <laughs> So he is my all-time favourite. I'm sure I've read. I'm sure when I do the old um, random fixtures, I'm sure I've, I've described a similar situation where Reg got sent off somewhere. It might have been work, Workington, yeah. one of these one of these far-flung yeah, yeah. Um, outposts yeah. of, of civilization, and he got involved in a in a, in a row um, involved fisticuffs and got sent off, which he, he, asked, he gave a great quote to say he didn't think there was all that much to it, really, but refreezing him off. That's a great choice. I like Reg Davis. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, uh, he, he would have been involved. In Absolutely. <laughs> you can imagine being involved in that. Reg Davis in goal. So we're going to move across the, yeah. the, the back. Is it a 4-4-2 you've gone for him? Yeah, I'm going to have 4-4-2. I was, going to, I, I was tempted to have the two full-backs I started with, which was Alex Jardine and Stan Ansel. Right. They were getting... They were built out of the same mould. Nobody went past them. Well, they went past them. They didn't them. physically get past them. They didn't anything. <laughs> Anslow, I remember, was particularly hard. He was a real nutter of his right, time. Right, right. Um, I'm not going to choose them. I'm going to write back and have John Gilchrist. Gilchrist, 1960s player? Yeah, 1960 to 69. He played, I'm, again, I had to look him up, 280 right. times. I mean, we've had, we've had some decent right backs, but I, I liked him because he was consistent. He was he was in the era of Scottish he was a Scottish player when every team had Scottish defenders. Right. You know, every club had a Scottish yeah, it was, it was a, you don't No, you don't anymore. see him. The, the game must have um no. crumbled up there in, in that way. Yeah. Yeah, no, but we all and you and it'd always be hard players. Yeah. And uh, no, he was I, I liked him for no other reason that he just was yes, solid. I understand. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, Good choice. Um, not spectacular. Not spectacular. Um, where do you want to go? Let's across go across the middle? the middle. Let's go. So we'll do the central defenders next. Well, if we're talking about Millwall players, there's only one that can yes, be the there is, isn't there? Barry. <laughs> it's got to be Barry. Who Kitchener. else? <laughs> um, I always think with him and King, I think they were good together. Yeah. And I wonder who made who the better player. Because I think. That's a good question. I never thought of it. Um, because they, they, they were very much a unit, weren't they? Kitchen and yeah. Brian King. Um, that's a, I, I've done I, probably not answerable now, but it's a very good question. No. Um, I think they both work very, very well with each other. They they were both in their different ways I, iconic figures of that era as well. They, if you say to me early nineteen seventies Millwall, you think of Kitch, you think of Brian King, yeah, possibly, you know, um, yeah, no, very much. But the other thing about him, the man who can turn down a, a, a Going to Liverpool, a transfer to Liverpool to stay at Millwall mm-hmm. has got in your. It's got to be yeah. in your all time Millwall. Yeah, team. that's 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 that's. Is that that was the story, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good choice. Um, and the other one, again, not the best centre half we've ever had, but a Millwall man through and through, Rhino, Keith Stevens, Rhino's Keith Stevens. Yep. Um, he was he was a hard man. I remember Tony Whittle was playing with him at, at, at then, and it, Whittle went over. And he just shared across to him, and I won't even explain. Don't you're not injured? Just get up! Just get, 
There was another one. <laughs> but no, he, um, he was, it was a long was, uh, servant. Uh, I mean, obviously, ki- Kitchen is one that um, springs immediately to my mind, and I'm sure you know fans of our era, uh, 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 Mike. But and, and so does Keith Stevens. But he's not quite as lodged in the the Millwall psyche, is he? Nah. And yet the the, the no, length yeah. of service that Keith Stevens got, and then into management, yeah. and and Being turned us around as well. As well you know. The Absolutely. No, he was. He, he wasn't. I think probably because Kitchener was a much better player. Yeah. Rhino wasn't as good as him, so he doesn't quite. Rhino was adaptable though, because obviously he was a defender, but he, he, he was, could he, turn his hand in midfield if called upon. Absolutely, and he played right back for a, a long time. Yeah, long. that's right. He was. Um, he wasn't as limited as maybe. I don't know. The, I don't know what impression did he create? I suppose he he created that hard man image, but he was he was a better player than that. But I do. No, I do was. agree Kitchener was the better the better quality for, uh, defender, you know. So we're going to have in the left left um, side then, in that case. Well, I was just going to say, the other person I only saw very briefly was Charlie Hurd. Oh, right. Wow. Before he, before he went. But I my memory's shot to pieces, yeah. I say. And he would have, in, in terms of actually being a the better player, I think he'd probably... Well, he was an international quality player when he played for the Republic. He was. Yeah. He was. And I remember him going and people being very sad because he was a very... Yeah, good absolutely. Player. Um, wow, you've seen them all. You've seen them all. Well, I mean, <laughs> Charlie Hurley is he's, he's your choice for left side. Yeah. Okay. No, oh, he's not. No, oh, sorry. sorry. My choice for left side. No, no, he would. He would have been my alternative oh. centre. My choice for left yep. side has only got to be one. Though. It's Harry Cripps. Right. It has got to be Harry Cripps. I mean, we've had some decent indoors. Would be a better left back. Well, Cripps. But, uh, Cripps. Harry yeah, Cripps. Cripps was. I, I mean, I, I was lucky enough to. Start going when Cripps was really on the back end of his. He had the last uh, last okay. season, I think, a little bit, and then he was he, he was gone. Yeah, he, he went. Was, he finished up at Charlton. Right? He was, yeah, he was never a great footballer, but he was just a Millwall player who. But gave beloved it. Mike, I mean, the crowd loved him. They they Absolutely. they just it was like um, besotted, you know, whatever whatever he did, yeah, no, whatever he, he did. Absolutely. He could do no wrong if he fouled it up. It didn't matter. It was uh, very much. Uh, Harry's the man. I remember Francis Lee, Franny Lee came down and played a game yeah. against him and he ran round him once and apparently the story goes, as I heard, was that Cripp said to him, you did it again, I'll put you in the <laughs> stand. And he didn't do it again. Not when you saw the stand he where you did. might be put. No. Absolutely, yeah, because he was going to put him in the, you know, below the grandstand. You know, so, and there wasn't much room there, was no. there? And he could easily have done it. So he didn't. No, he, I liked him. He was I mean, good. I've told I've told really this before, tough. and I'll apologise to listeners for repeating myself. But I, I was always a gog as a kid because I would sit in the with my mum's extra ten p. I would sit in those four court seats, which was on Harry's side. Yeah, and he had this trick, yeah. Mike. I mean, you, you must have seen it. it. We'd get given a free kick in defence deep, so Harry would take the free kick on the left side. And he'd be placed, take great care to place the ball whilst bending over on the floor. And while the referee's back was turned, he'd start walking forwards with the ball. Yeah. And the crowd would love it. They would just roll up laughing. Yeah. He'd take about five yards, yeah. still bent yeah. over in yeah. like a, in a U-shape with the ball at his feet. Yeah. I mean, he'd get away with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, different kind of days. Yeah, in way. Humor, humor featured more in the game, I think, back then. Um, I think, just say, can I give an honourable mention to Alan Dunn and Tony Craig? Of course, yeah, they're very Millwall players. Just and, and, and good timing because Craig has just signed for uh, Dorking, I think, National League Dorking. Yeah, oh, has he? from uh, Crawley. Oh, oh, I like, oh, he, he he's been there what three times, and he he always goes. Absolutely, everything. absolutely. Two two good and, and Dunny yeah. too. Dunny it's too scary. as well. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's there's your defence, Gilchrist, Kitch. Steak, uh, Rhino and Harry Cripps. Who are you going to go for in the midfield then, um, Mike? I'm going to go for, of course, Terry Hurt. Oh, this is this is a, a four. Okay. It, it doesn't have wingers. And just four, four four midfielders. Like, so. That's very that's very yeah. Millwall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no wingers. No no, no wingers, talented wingers. wide men. Let's just stick four. No, no I'm not so bad. I've got time for that. So I've, I've got to have Hurlough. Terry Hurt, of yep. course. Um, and I've got. I also think I've got to have. Tim Cahill, because I think he was just exceptional. He was talent. And that goal he scored at the, in the semi-final. Oh, and God. he could he could mix it as heart. well, Mike. He was he was talented, yeah. like Herlock. Yeah. But it, it was no it was no pushover, was he? <laughs> no, no, he wasn't. And he he's always spoken well of Millwall. Absolutely. Afterwards. He's never you know never said anything other than no. good things about us. So I think 
that that helps being a mill person as well. And I thought he playing for us because my mate lived in Australia now, and he kept me in touch right. with his goals he scored in his OCR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Now it's phenomenal. I mean, he was a one-man Australian yeah, team. Yeah, he, he, he single really handedly pulled them through many Absolutely a situation. Didn't he? Herlock Cahill, it's a, it's a great start to a midfield. Who else are you going to have in midfield? In my... Alex Ryan. Oh, what a good player. I love that. What a good player. Wow. I mean, he's, he's, he's down here, down at Reading now. He's coaching at yeah. Reading. But uh, he was, I liked him driving the ball forward. Again, very, very um, talented. A, a, um, yeah. Again, I think if he'd have played anywhere else and maybe wasn't Scottish, yeah. he'd have if it made it further in the game. You know, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, he, he he had some personal problems, I know, because he was we were sat in a stand. He was talking mm. to some people one day, and he, he had, but he was a very exceptional good player. player, a game changer, as yeah. I said before. Absolutely. Good. And my yeah. last one has got to be Jimmy Abdu. Jimmy Abdu cannot be anybody else but Jim. I mean. He, he carried Trotter around on his back for so many days. <laughs> he must have been exhausted by Because Trotter never no, ran, he didn't, did he? No. Jimmy Abdu did all his running. If you could have cloned Jimmy Abdu with Liam Trotter's talent, Absolutely. you'd have he'd been playing at Barcelona or Paris Saint-Germain or somewhere, wouldn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's that's my... Herlock, Cahill, Ray and Abdu. That's a great midfield. Yeah. I would have put the other two I was thinking about Stephen Reid, yeah, who I liked a good player, a lot. yeah, and Keith Weller Keith predated Weller me, but I've heard, well. heard only good. Yeah, things, he was a yeah. he was a he was a yeah. class act. Yeah. So, but I think those four really on me. I like, I like the inclusion of Jimmy. I mean, he 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 had uh, an ability to run. I, I mean, uh, oh, Hun- yeah. Honeyman now uh, runs and runs, and so does Tom Bradshaw. But Jimmy Abdu, I think, was the the master of one hundred percent commitment every game. Absolutely, he never never gave you less no, than that. Did he? Absolutely, every single time. And uh, no, I liked him a lot. I thought. So then we've done the midfield. Who are we going to have up front then, Mike? Oh, we've got two up yep. front. I mean, obviously, if I was picking my best team, it'd be Teddy. Sheldon. Yeah, this is this is a Millwall team, though. <laughs> yeah, it's a Millwall team. So I'm going to go. I actually thought about Richard Sadler because you mentioned about Harris yeah. getting injured. Sadler got injured around the same time, didn't he? As Harris got yes. to be honest. And if we'd have had those two well, that, for any period of time, we would we would have made promotion. He was a player transformed because he was it was quite like a waif almost Absolutely. when he first arrived, and really you couldn't you couldn't have seen no. the prospect that he would become, Mike. Um, no, I, agree. And I don't know if it. I don't know if they put him with some kind of growth injection drug or something, but he, he was transformed with with Steve Claridge alongside him he in was. that two thousand and one two season. Claridge said he was the best player he'd ever best centre forward he'd ever played with, didn't he? At one time, yeah. No, that's I, saying something. I mean, I agree with you. I mean, I should never be used as a scout because when Stephen Reid, Paul Lyon, <laughs> and Richard Sadley came in, I thought they were absolutely awful, and I'd have got rid of them straight away. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. Not very clever. No, no. I'll, no. I'll go back to my team. Um, yep. Two players from the 60s. A guy called yep. Pat Terry, who played between 61 and 64. Right. I've had okay. a look. He played 97 games and scored 41 goals. Right. That's a good rate of return. Wow. But he wasn't... A, it may sound... He was a guy I've never seen anybody, except possibly Tim Kerr, jump as high as him. He could right. leap... And he, I remember he famously had a goal disallowed because um, he out-jumped the goalkeeper. And the referee said afterwards, nobody can possibly jump that high without handling it. Right. And he was that, he had that talent. He had that Cahill-esque ability he just, to yeah, leap. Cahill tended to be more of a stat. Terry would run and leap. He was, wow. uh, was generally... He, early 60s, Mill, is it the, the kind of... The, 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 the hoops. Yeah, the white shirt yes, with the, the blue... So, yeah. Centre strike, yeah, there, yeah. Um, good choice. I mean, uh, 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 that's a. Uh, uh, I hadn't um, haven't had that one before, Pat Terry. But that's a very no. very good choice. And his mate, and what were written? Yeah, who played between sixty and sixty two, Peter yeah. Burridge. Peter Burridge. Yeah. Now wow. his record is even better. In ninety three games, he scored sixty four goals. Wow. He was. A, that's quite incredible. He it? was a stocky inside forward. Um, you would have been around for the um, the unbeaten run yeah. period then, in the case because yeah. these were players of that era, That's weren't right, they, Terry yeah. and Bar- the yeah. beginnings of it. Anyway, I was playing myself most Saturday, so I didn't see a lot 
all of that, but right. some of it. Um, yeah. No, he was a he was he was very good. He was a very very good. Uh, I seem to remember most of his goals seem to be from, and this is obviously not true, but they seem to be from the edge mm. of the area. He had a very right. good left foot, and he seemed to right. score many goals from, from there. Anyway. Wow. That's that's a great choice. So, I mean, two players we haven't had before, um, Pat Terry and Peter Burrows. You, you're right. I mean, they're, they're both with statistical records that are quite, <laughs> quite jaw dropping, really, aren't they? I mean, they're, yeah. that's, they're amazing stats when you, when you look at them separately. Um, the one I would have put in there is Alf Wood. Did you, did you ever see Alf? Wood? I do. Yeah, I loved Alf Wood. Oh, I did um, as well. He a real got... Millwall player. A real Millwall yeah, player. He was. Proper Millwall player. And I remember when he. The, the the one thing I remember, or the thing I remember, we beat Preston five one in a night game. Yes, right, midweek game. Yeah. yeah, and it's the only time I can remember the crowd, the Millwall crowd, clapping somebody else because Bobby Charlton was their manager. That's right, and he yeah. walked round the pitch to the dugout. Yeah, and he, he did. Gave him. Uh, I think Jack Charlton got a similar. Uh, I remember uh, Middlesbrough. Came. I think we we oh, lost okay. to Middlesbrough. Um, but Bobby Charlton, Jack Charlton, as yeah. members of the World Cup yeah, team, they, no one else did. Um, no, no, absolutely. <laughs> they, they, got, they got the complete opposite. <laughs> so it's a very rare event. I mean, the only, in recent years, I can only think of Paul Merson being applauded off. Um, I, th- I, I can't think of many others that earned that applaud. No. You've got to be no. something very, very special to no, uh, to earn the applause as an opponent of yeah, the Mill Crew. Very much. That's a great. That's a great all-time eleven there, Mike. I'm going to run right. through it for listeners now. So we've got Reg Davis in goal. The back line is uh, John Gilchrist, Barry Kitchener, Keith Stevens, and Harry Cripps. Midfield, what a midfield this is! Terry Herlock, Tim Cahill, Alex Ray, and Jimmy Abdu. That's a very, very solid and talented midfield, actually. And then up front, two players that predate me by a long way, by ten years plus. Uh, Pat Terry. And Peter Burridge. That's a very unusual eleven, and a great set of eleven players you picked out there, Mike. I really, I really take my hat off to you there. That's you've broken new ground there, mate. Yeah, Thank I you thought, very much. As I'm, I'm, as I'm the oldest one, at least I should put. Some you are the oldest. Yeah, I, should some <laughs> I should put some of those people back, you know, back in people's uh, memory, really. To, 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 Absolutely. They were good players. So, I mean, football Absolutely. was very different, as we said. It wasn't as hyped as it is now. But uh, no, no. Players. no. I mean, players of that era, uh, I mean, it was interesting on Saturday seeing Zian and uh, Charlie Cresswell getting the, the tube back from yeah. Um, yeah. Queen's Park Rangers because clearly it makes sense to get the underground, you're going to be home quicker. Um, you know, it, it, I think pl- one of the things that always strikes me of that pr- pre-modern era is that the players were much more related to the men in the crowd, well, predominantly men in the crowd, Absolutely. wasn't it? Working class blokes yeah. who had got lucky; they got a little bit of yeah. uh, football uh, talent, but they yeah. weren't they weren't earning extortionate no. amounts of money out no. of it. Um, and going and going I, to the game on the bus. Yeah, you know, from, um, they wouldn't. Yeah, have... that's right. Famous images of was it the World Cup? I think mean, some one of the I think one of the players. It might have been Bobby Moore got the the bus to the yeah. to the state yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. You know, um, so it made it much more accessible. Um, and as we said at the start of the conversation, I, I think the gamers. The game has gained a lot. I'm not, I'm not totally romantic about the past. No, me talk, but The old yeah. den. And I, I, I think, um, you know, there, there was much to um, much that's improved in the game. But I think the, the impact of money is not always um, not always as positive as as, uh, as you'd hope. But there we are. I, I, um, the thing about the old den is I'd have hate to have been an away supporter and be penned in that corner. <laughs> I mean, that, with an awful view, didn't didn't some Leicester fans take legal action, yeah, get their they, money they, back because yes, they said they had a restricted yeah, view, yeah. and it was pretty restricted. It was it was, it was a very awkward spot over yeah, there. It must have been right being in prison there, and they got banged especially in. with the fences Absolutely. when they put the fences. You know, it's like being in um, Guantanamo Bay and with a football match going on out there somewhere. Yeah, yeah nice welcome when you left. So. Abs- yes, that's right. Mike, that's fantastic, mate. We've, we've there's, there's the hour. We try and bring these shows in for an hour, and okay. Mike has timed it professionally to put. Can, that's I, fantastic, mate. can I say something before I go, please? Yeah, of course. I'd just like yeah. to thank you. I'd like to thank oh, you for all the hard you. work you do. I think you do, oh. particularly for the the food hub, the money you give from all sorts of donations, the calendars, and all that sort of thing. I think it's absolutely tremendous. I know you're involved in lots of things, and I think you do a fantastic job. So well done. Thank you. You've embarrassed me now. I don't know what to say to that. Well, <laughs> you accept it 
what it is. When we're war, we deal with insults and spams better than compliments. Yes, that's, you do. that's that's very kind of you. Um, I, 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 when we we used to write for the uh, yeah. the fanzine when I used to yeah. do the fanzine, and I always took the view with that, like I do with the the podcast. I, I can't I can't pay anyone. No. You know, it doesn't generate money to pay people to come on it. Um, it, it, it. So I'm asking people to come on, do stuff for nothing, effectively. And I think the you cannot do that unless you're going to give that money to some no, good cause. No, I agree cause. with that entirely. Um, so the, the, at the moment, the food hub is, is just a, it's a Millwall, it's a Millwall charity. We've given money to various charities. Yeah. It's quite interesting when you do give money to charities as to who, who is the most um, grateful. I don't know if great gratitude is the right yeah. thing to look for, but who, who, who just takes it for granted and who mm. just... Uh, it's just interesting, yes. you know. The bigger, the, invariably, the bigger the, the charity, yeah. the more of an industry it is, yeah. and the less, Absolutely. less you count. So I've, I've always liked to do stuff. A, that's Millwall related. So like the Mizzen Foundation, for example, yeah. and and uh, Demelza, the other yeah. the various causes, and the Food Hub being um, very, very Millwall focused and helping local families. I just think it's an ideal. So I'm very happy to carry on doing that way. So. Uh, you're very kind. Thank you very much, Mike. You've embarrassed me. You've, you've thrown yeah. me off. I, I, I had my had my little spiel to close us out there, and he's got a bold me middle middle stump there, Mike. Mike, I really appreciate your time, mate. It's been fantastic talking to you. And uh, you. I hope you've enjoyed it. I, hope I have enjoyed thoroughly it. enjoyed it. Thank you, and maybe dig back deep into my memory banks. Absolutely, and you've you've beaten me for length of time of mill mill wallness. So yeah, there we are. Listeners, would you like to be a listed lion? Um, do get in touch with me. It's great to talk. However, not everyone can go back to a long way. But if, you know, whether you started supporting in recent times, moderately recent times or whatever, do give us a shout on Twitter. Message me and we can we can exchange numbers and we can get something set up. It's great to have as wide a range of people as possible on this show. Mike, big thank you, mate. Um, thanks for your time. It's a pleasure. And, Thank you for listening, dear listeners. Until the next edition of Act on Millwall, goodbye from me, goodbye from Mike, and Arriva Dirty Millwall. Act on Millwall. <laughs>